hydrogen is, is, is very abundant. In fact, it's the most abundant uh, component in the universe. And when, when you burn it, it doesn't uh, emit CO2, which is one of the, one of the key uh, characteristics that I think is, is giving it all, all the hype that it has today. Hello and welcome to LNG TV for our latest episode of LNG Leaders. And today we're going to be discussing all things hydrogen because I am delighted to welcome from Madrid, Leira Adrian, who is Natagy's Global Head of New Energies and Innovation. Uh, good morning to you, Leira. And, oh, I see you've, you've, you've got a friend with you. Yes, I'm here with uh, Pepe because as, as, as part of my new role in, in the new energies and innovation, Pepe, is, his, his tenure in, in the area is a lot uh, greater than mine. And he's been meeting with the king and a number of celebrities here in Spain. I can imagine. Um, there's just so much talk about hydrogen at the moment. Um, why is it seen as such a crucial component to a low carbon future? Well, uh, hydrogen isn't new. I mean, uh, uh, this last Christmas, my, my father gave me a Jules Verne uh, mystery island. And they're just about uh, towards the middle of the book. Uh, well, it, it's about uh, uh, the, the, these guys that get stuck in an island uh, off the, off, uh, near Australia. And, well, they have to do everything themselves. And so they get concerned about what's going to happen in the world uh, when coal runs out. And well, th then the engineer says, well, don't worry, we still have hydrogen. So that novel was over 150 years old. And well, the good Mr. Byrne failed to miss uh, oil and gas <laughs> in, in between. But it, there was still that idea, you know, hydrogen is, is, is very abundant. In fact, it's the most abundant uh, component in the universe. And when, when you burn it, it doesn't uh, emit CO2, which is one of the, one of the key uh, characteristics that I think is, is giving it all, all the hype that it has today. So normally the, the two ways you, you uh, extract hydrogen are either through uh, steam methane reforming of, of CH4, of methane, of natural gas, which is a traditional way to produce hydrogen, or the, what is called the green hydrogen technology, which is uh, through electrolysis of water. So you, you separate up, uh, the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And then that hydrogen, when put into a thermal power plant, for instance, that, that wouldn't uh, produce any, any CO2 to the atmosphere. And that's, that's the main characteristic, why it is, it is so much, uh, there's so much hype around it. But it still has many, many relevant technical issues to overcome, in addition to the cost of producing this, this green hydrogen. Clearly an emergent industry. Um, you alluded to the fact that um, you know, there were still obstacles and challenges to overcome. I mean, is it purely a long game? Or are there opportunities, do you think, in maybe the short and mid-term as well for hydrogen? Well, I think it is. It is a long game. That's, that's what, I, what I thought when I, when I took over the role. I thought I would live a lot better, but um, <laughs> that, that, is not, that is not the case. I think right now there is a race on a number of, of issues. And, and the outcome of that race and, 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 and the, the speed... At, uh, at which we, we start tackling these issues will greatly define how this, uh, this new commodity will be traded and who is going to win that, that, that trade over pretty much. So I, I, I see these as, well, green versus blue. Uh, so I already outlined a little bit. Uh, green is, is produced, hydrogen produced by electrolysis of water and that the power behind that electrolysis process has to be renewable power. Uh, uh, for the time being, that's that's quite expensive. What what is the industry seeing that that with the massive expansion of renewables, cost would cost of electricity would drive down to zero. With water also being abundant, then that's that's a process that that produces cheap hydrogen. But it's not the case right now. So the case right now is that uh, green hydrogen is produced at a cost of around. 150 euros or dollars per megawatt hour 
And if we see that the uh, gas price is currently uh, at $20 uh, per megawatt hour, that is, that, is, uh, that is quite a big difference to overcome. Blue is, is uh, produced by steam methane reforming of natural gas. So still, by definition, it's, it's more expensive than natural gas because you need to, to take that through a process. Uh, what's going to happen? Who will win? In, in, in the European Union, uh, only green hydrogen is contemplated. And on the back of the, of the next gen funds and the COVID funds, we see that this will be uh, the winning technology in Europe. But elsewhere in the world, uh, logically, we, we see uh, many other uh, blue hydrogen projects. And so I think everything is good. Both technologies are great because they're going to get uh, the demand, uh, you know, the, the production up and running, and, and we can start to see how that product is, is commercialized. A second key aspect of, of this race is how will it be transported? So if we see that there are importing countries and exporting countries, what will be the winning technology? Will it be liquefied hydrogen, such as uh, similar to LNG? That has technical issues because uh, it has to be uh, 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 cooled at, at even a lower temperature than LNG. It has to be cooled to minus 253 degrees with all the technical issues that has behind in terms of steel and, and, and the resilience of the material. Another uh, alternative is to turn that into ammonia. But then if you turn it into ammonia uh, at the reception point, you wouldn't turn it back into hydrogen. So then you're tackling that, that ammonia is going to be that end product that will be traded. And there are other solutions such as the liquefied organic carriers, which uh, carry the hydrogen, but at atmospheric temperature. These technologies are still in the making, and I think driving the cost of those down is going to be definitive in, in, in how the, the commodity gets traded, how much its presence uh, worldwide uh, will it have, and, and who eventually, what industry will be trading the, the, the commodity. So you've taken on this new challenge. Are, are there any kind of parallels or learnings you've been able to take from your previous career in LNG? Um, Perhaps for those that don't know, it would be great just to hear a little bit more about your sort of previous 10 years in the LNG business. Oh, great. Sure. Well, uh, I, I think all of my career is relevant to, to the role I'm, I'm assuming now. So uh, I started out in a new graduates program 22 years ago in, in, at Natergy. And for the first 10 years, I was actually in the power business. So I was developing uh, CCGT plants in in what was the the pipeline the gas pipeline company. We were a bit of outliers, and it was a small team, and we worked pretty much like a startup. So that was that was a fun era. Uh, that was the, the at the time we we bought uh, the Ecoelectrica uh, asset from the Enron bankruptcy uh, at that time, and it was it was a very interesting uh, time and it developed my business development capabilities. But uh, I found that to be a bit slow, to be honest. And so when I moved to, to uh, LNG uh, in June 20, 2009, that was, that was totally, uh, I, I, I really loved it because it involved, well, I was single at the time, uh, which was great to, to handle all the amount of travel, but I found myself traveling around the world, which is something that I love, uh, and meeting with with people that were similar to me, uh, who I could have uh, dinner with and, and have fun, and start uh, understanding uh, where the other people came from, what were their needs in terms of the commodity, the flex they would need, and and what I could what I could provide, and that was that was amazing. That was a, a, a real uh, life changing uh, step. Then I get married, uh, and, and in retrospect, everything worked out quite well because uh, about the time I'm about to have my daughter is when uh, we decide that that we that we want to take the business, scale the business further, and be more involved into uh, the uh, the pure spot business. At that time, also the stream JV was Repsol dissolved. and we create uh, our our outlets out in in Dublin and Singapore. So I stay in Madrid. Uh, I take up an, uh, an origination role, 
which is also a bit back to business development, which is which is uh, also uh, a healthy change at that time. And then um, two years later, I, I come back and then I head everything uh, the, the the business development and the and the uh, and the LNG trading and marketing from Madrid, uh, heading also the the Dublin and Singapore offices. And I was in the midst of, of, of moving that role to Singapore when, when everything uh, changes and, and I assume this role. So I would say that the key learnings from my past are, you know, the importance of business development and the importance of inking deals and the transactional mode. And those are two very different uh, aspects. And that's a bit what's behind how I organize a team. So I have a business development team that's focused in, on, on getting the details right and the end of the production uh, projects up to speed. And then I have the, the, the guys uh, more in touch with the market, seeing how we can, we can find ways to, to, uh, to speed up those revenues. So you've talked about creating a good team around you um, and, and, and obviously you're now shaping Natagy's future and you've got your new role. Um, do you enjoy do you enjoy being a leader? Is that something that you set out and you wanted to do? And what, what traits and skills do you feel that you've picked up along the way to, to, to get to where you are now? I think, I, Ali, I do. I do enjoy being a leader. Uh, my mom always says I was very bossy since, <laughs> since I was very little. So, <laughs> But that's, uh, being bossy is not being a leader. I think you also need to uh, lead uh, by example and, and, and be very close to, to your team's need because they're, they're human beings and, and particularly uh, going through a pandemic, you have to be very, very aware of, of uh, the psychological needs and, and, and the needs of, of your team. I would say I've had very good uh, examples uh, throughout my career. Uh, I had one very uh, major boss, uh, Manuel, who, who was, uh, he was, he was a real character. And so I, I, I do, I think I have some traits that that, that he has as well, uh, namely giving um, my team a lot of autonomy. I like uh, I don't like to be on top of every single detail. To be honest, I think uh, I'd rather leave them space to make mistakes and to and to realize their full potential. So that's one, and then also uh, being a close leader. So, so having a personal relationship as well. I mean, I've been in, in the LNG uh, business for 10 years. That involved uh, a lot of travel and that involved being with your team at, at times 24 hours a day. Well, not 24 hours, but, you know, uh, very, you, you need to have a very close relationship. And I think that that's, that's something I want to bring into this new uh, this new stage in, in my career where travel is probably not that necessary. But still, I want to have a very close uh, relationship with, with my team. I think that's the essence of, of a high-performing team. As a leader of a progressive new energies business, um, has that influenced your thinking um, and your approach in terms of the environment and culture that you're cr trying to create? Well, um, I think that yes. And uh, for instance, I have an example. It's not uh, completely related to what you're saying, but I think it's, it's a very good example of, of how the uh, times are changing and how culturally this pandemic is, is going to change the paradigms. I, I recently had to, to change the, uh, the uh, structure because at the beginning I had six business lines and I thought that that wasn't uh, very productive because each of the business lines was tackling both business development and, and commercial aspects of the business. They were each seeing the same people. And I, I, don't, I think that was counterproductive. So uh, um, I, I, I named the business development unit. And the person I chose was one, one of the, uh, one of, uh, the people that, that was already reporting to me. But I hadn't met her before real life. So only, only through screens and telephones. And in addition to that, she didn't live in Madrid. She lives in Barcelona. So I think going back two years, that would have been, I'd be, it wouldn't have even crossed my mind. 
to have someone in the team that's not based in as in the same place as, as I'm based. And I think it's it's really a a, a game changer and in, in in how we have to relate with this with this new reality in in creating relationships that are strong and and and, and as strong as as the face to face relationships uh, through this type of, of connection. So uh, I think that's going to be a cultural aspect and, and that's going to uh, develop a lot more. And finally, Leira, we asked this question of um, a lot of our guests that come on LNG TV. Um, it's about impact and what impact you would like to make both professionally and personally. Um, how would you like to be remembered at the end of your career? Well, uh, professionally, uh, we, we've discussed this as a long game. I, I, I hope, I don't hope to be the greatest hydrogen trader of all time because I think I will be very old by, by the time uh, the industry picks up uh, to have, uh, you know, uh, real trading activity. But uh, at least I hope to uh, build up the appetite and to create, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the future market for that, for that hydrogen uh, commodity industry to, to develop and for the trading of that to develop and to be able to uh, capture the interest of, of some fellow LNG traders uh, to join me. Some brilliant advice. Thank you so much, Leira. Really good to talk to you. Thank you so much for that. And it, it's going to be great to, or to follow you and your new role and see how hydrogen um, develops over the coming years. So thank you so much, Leira. Thank you. So there Bye -bye. is Leira Adrian there, her head of uh, new energies and innovation at Natagy, and you have been watching the latest episode of LNG Leaders.